Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be solving this question which states that if H is given to be a subgroup of the group G, then the centralizer. Now, what is the centralizer? The centralizer is now not based on one element, but it is based on various elements which are a part of this subgroup H, right? So they're saying, how do we define this set? We are taking all those elements from the group G such that when uh, such that this element commutes with all the elements taken from the subgroups, right? So we need to prove that the centralizer is basically a subgroup of G. So remember the definition for a subgroup, we can either prove uh, a, su a subset to be a subgroup by one step subgroup test or by two step subgroup test, right? So we assume H to be a subgroup of G. So in order to prove that CH is a subgroup of G, we are given this uh, subset, correct? Now, in order to prove that this is a subgroup, we first of all see it is non-empty in nature. Why? Because it at least contains an element which is an identity element, right? You know identity element is present within our group because it is a group and you know identity elements commutes with every element of the group. Hence, in particular, it would also commute with the elements of the subgroup H, correct? So therefore, you have two elements A and B taken from the centralizer of H. Now, uh, we, in order to prove that this is a subgroup, we will prove that A, B inverse also belongs to the centralizer of H. Right? Now, if A belongs to the centralizer of H, it means that A H is equal to H A for all H belongs to H according to the definition that is given to us. And B belongs to CH means the same BH is equal to HB for all H belongs to capital H. Now, in order to show that uh, AB inverse belongs to CH, we first of all show that B inverse is present in CH. So for that, we need to show that B inverse H is equal to HB inverse for all H belongs to the subgroup capital H. Correct? We already know that BH is equal to HB for all H belongs to capital H. So we can pre and post multiply both sides with B inverse so that we would have B inverse B. Here we can write B inverse and here we can write B inverse. Similarly, on the right hand side we can write B inverse uh, and uh, on both the sides so that here you see this become identity. Here this become identity, right? And this identity is absorbed here by the element H so that you have the required relation. Hence, B inverse is present in the centralizer of H. Now, in order to prove that AB inverse belongs to the centralizer of H, we need to prove that this AB inverse commutes with every element H of H. This is true for all H which are present in capital H, correct? So, what we do, we take this left hand side and now we can make use of associativity, right, to, uh, to uh, shift the brackets. So here we have B inverse H. Now you know B inverse H is equal to H B inverse. So you can write it like this here, right, and this is true for all the H present in capital H. And now we can again make use of associative property here to uh, shift the brackets. So here you know A H is what because A is present in C H therefore A H is equal to H A correct. So you can write A H as H A. Now you see this is what using again the commutate associativity you have uh, both these expressions equal to each other A B inverse of H is equal to H of A B inverse. Hence this is true for all H in H hence this element AB inverse is present in the centralizer of H and thus by the one step subgroup test we have AB inverse present in uh, C, uh, C of H thus C of H is a subgroup right this was a quite easy proof well that is it for this video thank you for watching.